Okay. Um, pain to injuries. All right, good day, everyone. This is Stephen Chang coming to you live from 333 Grand in downtown Jersey City, New Jersey. Please visit my website, simhayoga.com, for the hybrid schedule, which is in person here at 333 Grand, as well as through Zoom. You can register for class through ubindi.com, and if you're watching this on YouTube, costs are $10, and you can pay through Venmo or PayPal. Payment information on the bottom of the video, as well as my website, simhayoga.com. Today's class is Intermediate Advanced Lab. It is a level two, level three. If you're working with any kind of special conditions or limitations, make sure that you do modify or skip poses altogether, making good decisions about your movement practice so that you don't create any injuries or perpetuate any injuries. Now, if your hips or your lower back are tight, please elevate and sit up on some blocks or some blankets, and uh, that will help you to find the length of your spine when you take your seat. All right, let the palms face up. Fingers come to Gyana Mudra, thumb and index fingers touching. And as you ground evenly through your seat, elongate through your spine and let your inhales even out with your exhales. Allowing your breath to smooth out and through the breath, let the mind start to quiet. Inhales even out with your exhales. And whenever you're ready, ujjayi breath, oceans breathing. So with your lips touching and a slight restriction to the back of the throat, creating the ha sound as you inhale and exhale, kind of like you're trying to fog up a mirror with your nose. So Vivian, away from the circle, right? So either side of the circle is fine. Yeah. Three ohms together, inhale. Um, um, the eyes closed, hands together in prayer on front the heart, pressing the thumbs into your heart, heart back into the thumbs, lifting the heart up toward the sky, setting your intention for your yoga practice, devoting your practice to someone or something or to yourself, your supreme self that lives within your heart, chanting the mantra for purification, purifying the space in which you practice yoga, call and response. Om ma pavitraha, Om ma pavitraha, pavitrawa, pavitrawa, sarwa vustan, sarwa vustan, gato piwa, gato piwa, yaha smarit, yaha smarit, bundrikaksham, bundrikaksham, sapahya, sapahya, Bihyendraha, Bihyendraha, Suchihi, Suchihi. Beginning to open the eyes, palms face up, fingers come back to Gyan Mudra, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, right ear to the right shoulder, right hand to the left side, elongate through the left side of the neck. And then chin toward the right shoulder. Release back to center, drop the right hand, left ear to the left shoulder, left hand to the right side. And then chin toward the left shoulder. Release back to center, drop the left hand, chin toward the chest. Big circles with the head in one direction, ear to one side, roll it back. Opposite side, roll the center. A few more rounds at your own pace. And then one more giant circle, chin back toward the chest and pause. And then taking the opposite direction. And then chin back toward the chest again. 
lifting the chin parallel to the floor and neutral spine. Extend the legs forward, separating the feet, hands supporting to either side and turning your toes toward each other. And then roll them out. Draw in, roll out, draw in, outer rotation, circling. <clears throat> Come back to center, switch them around in the rotations. And back to center again. <clears throat> Cross the shins, take the opposite shin on top, non-dominant crossing of the legs. Take the arms up high and extend. Exhale, twist to the right. Back to center, arms up. Twist to your left. Center again. Side bends, right hand down, left arm overhead. Take back up, other side. Take it back up, keep your legs crossed. You can support with your hands to your floor or the hands to the top of the knees. And then start to take circles with your spine and with your hips moving. And then as you draw the circles, Start to also incorporate the shoulders, right? All right, start to take it back to center. Come back to stillness and then go the opposite direction. And then once you get some movement going, start to incorporate your shoulders as well. And then make your way back to center. And then when you're ready, extend the legs forward, separating your feet. Take the arms up high, extend, exhale, forward fold. You can grab your feet, ankles, or your shins. Take it back up. Uh, let the feet be about match with distance. You're on your heels. Hands come back behind you for support, and let's windshield wipe your knees side to side. All right, come back to center, cross your shins, roll forward and come to your down dog. Start to pedal out the legs, walk it out side to side. All righty, come back to stillness in the down dog. Inhale, raise your right leg up, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee in toward the nose and around the spine. Kick it up, open up the hips and bend the right knee. Right knee outside of the right arm and touch. Kick it back up. Knee comes into twist and touch your left arm. Kick it back up. Stepping your right foot forward. Warrior one, arms up high and extend. Arms are going to go sidewards. Inhale, lengthen front leg, reach your arms up. Exhale, arms sidewardly and then down toward the floor. Inhale, lengthen front leg, raise your arms up. Exhale, bend the front knee, arms alongside. Inhale, lengthen, reach up. Keep the arms reaching. Bend the front knee as a warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Same thing here. Lengthen front leg, reach up. Bend the front knee, warrior two. Lengthen, reach up. Warrior two. Lengthen, reach up. Warrior two, reverse warrior, right arm up and back. Exhale, side angle, right hand to the floor, left arm reaching up. Extended side angle, left arm reaching forward to a diagonal, palm is facing down. And then taking big circles of the left arm, reach your left arm up, back, down, forward, up, back, down, forward, up, back, down, forward, and come all the way up into reverse warrior. And then hands to the floor, right foot, stepping back, plank. In a one breath, exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. Three progressive cobras, hands alongside the rib cage. Lift up, baby cobra, belly, lower ribs, stay on the floor. Exhale, lower almost all the way down. Inhale, lift up a little bit higher. Belly, lower ribs away from floor. Exhale, lower almost all the way down. Inhale, lift up even higher, full extension of your arms if you have it. 
Exhale, all the way down, and child's pose. Seat toward the heels and fold. Down dog. Inhale, left heel up. Left knee in toward the nose. Kick up, open up the hips, bend the left knee. Left knee outside of the left arm and touch. Kick back up. Knee comes into twist, touch your right arm. Kick back up. Stepping left foot forward. Warrior one, arms up high. So again, arms go sidewards. Inhale, legs in front, leg reach up high. Bend the front knee, arms alongside. Inhale, legs and reach up. Bend the front knee, arms alongside. Legs and reach up, keep the arms reaching up. Bending the front knees to warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Same thing here, legs and reach up. Warrior two. Legs and reach up. Warrior two. Legs and reach up. Warrior two, reverse warrior. Left arm up and back. Exhale, side angle. Left hand to the floor. Right arm reaching up. Extend a side angle. Right palm face down. Reach forward. So when you take your circles, right, I'm going to counter for you, and then we're going to move the arm up and back. So we're going to go backwards, okay? Right arm up, back, down, forward. Three times. Up, back. Down, forward, up, back, down, forward, and come all the way up. Reverse warrior. And then hands to the floor, left foot, stepping back, plank. Inhale, one breath. Exhale, all the way down to your belly. Three progressive cobras again. Inhale, lift up, baby cobra. Exhale, lower almost all the way down. Inhale, lift up a little bit higher. Exhale, lower almost all the way down. Inhale, lift up even higher, full extension, rear arms for cobra. And all the way down, child's pose, seat toward the heels and fold. And then down dog. Listen up, inhale, right heel up, right knee in toward the nose. Kick it up, open up the hips, bend the right knee, this time. Right knee to outside of the right arm. Stay there. You're going to slide the leg to the outside of the right arm, then to the inside of the right arm, and lift. Down the inside of the right arm to the outside of the right arm. Lift and kick it back. Three-legged dog. Knee comes into twist and touch the left arm and hold it there. Three, two, one. Kick back up. Three-legged dog. Stepping your right foot forward. Warrior one. Left hand to catch your right wrist, extend up and side bend to your left. Back to center, switch hands, extend, side bend to your right. Back to center, wrap the hands back behind you, interlace your fingers, lift up, gaze upwards, and then bow forward, devotional warrior. Stay low, release your hands to the floor for support. You're just going to go back and forward in a squatting position with your hands supporting. Bend your left knee, squat back in space, and then coming back forward into a lunge. Draw back to a squat. Draw forward into a lunge. One more time. Draw back to a squat. Draw forward into a lunge. Inhale. Come all the way back up. Reverse warrior. Lengthen out the right leg, triangle pose. Right hand to top of the shin or to the floor, left arm up. Extended triangle, left arm moving forward, palm is facing down. So again, when you take the circles, you're going back in space and then taking three circles. Raise your left arm up, back, down, forward, up, back, down, forward. Back, down, forward, and come all the way up into reverse triangle. Bend the front knee, hands to the floor, right foot, stepping back, plank, push up this time. Inhale, one breath. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left heel up. Left knee in toward the nose. 
Kick it up, open up the hips, bend the left knee. So listen up, right? Left knee to outside the left arm and stay there. You're gonna slide the left knee down the outside the left arm to the inside the left arm and lift. Down the inside the left arm to outside the left arm, lift and then kick back. Knee comes into twist, touch your right arm and hold it. Three, two, one. Kick it back up, three, like a dog. Stepping, your left foot forward. Warrior one, arms up high. Right hand, touching your left wrist, extend up, side bending to the right. Back to center, switch hands, extend, side bending to the left. Back to center, wrap the hands back behind you, interlace with the opposite thumb on top. Gaze upwards into a back bend, then bow forward, devotional warrior. Stay forward folding, release your hands to the floor for support. So coming back to a squat and then forward into lunge. Drawing back, bending your right knee, coming to a squat. Come forward into a lunge. Draw back to a squat. Take it forward into a lunge one more time. Draw back to a squat. Take it forward into a lunge. Inhale, come all the way up. Reverse warrior. Lengthen out the left leg, triangle. Hand to the floor, right arm reaching up. Extended triangle, right palm face down, reach forward. Three big circles, reaching back in space first. Right arm up, back, down, forward. Up, back, down, forward. Up, back, down, forward. All the way back up into reverse triangle. Then bending front knee, hands to the floor. Left foot, stepping back, plank. Inhale, one breath. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right heel up. Exhale, right knee in towards the nose. Kick it up, open up the hips, bend the right knee. Right knee outside of the right arm in touch. Kick it back up and flip the dog. Roll on to outside the left foot. Drop the right foot back behind you. Flip it back again, right leg up, three like a dog. Knee comes into twist, touch your left arm. Kick it back up, fall in triangle. Thread the right, arm, right leg underneath the left, and then extend. Flip it back, three like a dog. Stepping your right foot forward, warrior one. Hands together in prayer, interlace your fingers, press your palms forward. Lengthen your front leg, reach up high. Bend the front knee, press forward and twist right. Square center, length and reach up. Bend, press forward and twist. Square center, length and reach up. Bend, press forward, twist, stay twisting. Half bind, right hand behind you, left arm. Outer right knee for your twist. Then take the left hand to the floor for support as you then lengthen out the right leg for a revolved triangle with a half bind. Raise your right arm up and forward to the front of the room, extended revolved triangle. Half moon, bend your right knee, reach your right hand forward about a foot, loop off to right side. Tip forward to balance. So same hand, same foot to the floor. Left heel, left arm reaching up. Stay here in half moon or start binding. Bend your left knee, reach back with your left hand to grab the foot. If you can take both hands to your left foot, take it as a free hand balance, the full expression of your chapasana. Otherwise, just your left hand binding, right hand down. Come back to half moon, right hand to the floor, left arm up, and we're gonna take that into revolved half moon. Left hand down to the floor, square up your hips, so your hips are parallel to the floor. 
Raise your right arm up to twist. Then stay here in the revolved half moon. Or bind the right hand to left foot for revolved to pasana. Release your left foot if you have to bind. When you're ready, gaze to the floor and then left knee behind the right heel and lower down a little bit and then lift it back up and kick it back. Left knee behind the right heel. Kick it back up. Left knee behind the right heel and stay there. Clip the left knee behind the right heel and then take arms out to either side and balancing on the right foot and this is your hummingbird. Seated spinal twist, take the hands to your floor for support, and sit all the way down. So your right leg should be on top. So you can come off the foot, yeah. Right hand behind you, left arm is up, inhale, exhale, twist to the right. Inhale back to center, exhale, counter twist to your left. Back to center, warrior one. So stepping your right foot down, supporting with your hands. Left foot comes back and rise up. Exhale, open it up, warrior two. Reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor, right foot stepping back, plank. Stay in your plank for 10, nine, eight, seven, Five, four, three, two, one. Shift forward a little bit to bend the elbows for Chaturanga. Stay here in Chaturanga. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left heel up. Left knee in toward the nose. Kick up. Open up the hips. Bend the left knee. Left knee outside of the left arm and catch. Kick it back up and flip the dog. Roll arms outside the right foot. Left foot back behind you. Flip it back around. Left leg up. Three-legged dog. Left knee comes into twist. Touch your right arm. Kick it back up, fallen triangle. Left leg threads underneath the right. And then taking the balance here. Flip it back around. Left leg up, three-legged dog. Stepping your left foot forward. Warrior one. Hands together in prayer. Interlace with the other thumb on top. Pressing your palms forward. Lengthen the front leg, reach up high. Bend the front knee, press forward, twist left three times. Square center, lengthen, reach up. Bend, press forward, and twist. Square center, lengthen, reach up. Bend, press forward, and twist. Stay there, left hand behind you, half bind. Right arm, outer left knee to twist a little bit deeper. Stay in the twist, right hand comes to full support, and then lengthen out the left leg, twist a little bit deeper. Stay in the twist, raise your left arm up and reach forward, extend it, revolve, triangle. Then bend the front knee, half moon, left hand forward about a foot, loop off to left side. Tip forward to balance, right heel reaching back, right arm reaching up. So you're stacking your right side over your left. You may stay here, regular half moon, or start binding. Bending your right knee, grab the outside of the right foot. So this is the half variation of your chapasana. If your balance is good and you can take both sides of your right foot, take both hands. Stay on the left leg, releasing your binds, come back into your regular half moon. 
Then take the right hand down to your floor, square up your hips, revolved half moon. Right hand stays down, left arm reaching up to twist. Staying here or binding, left hand to the right foot and kick back. Releasing your right foot. Then gaze to the floor for, for balance. Then right knee behind the left heel. Lower down a little bit. Inhale. Kick it all the way back. Right knee behind the left heel. Kick it back. Right knee behind the left heel. Stay there with the knee behind the heel. Take both arms out to either side. Balancing on your left foot for hummingbird. See the spinal twist, hands to your floor. Take the seat all the way down. Left hand is behind you for support, right arm is up and twist to your left. Inhale back to center, exhale counter twist to the right. Center again, warrior one, stepping your left foot down, supporting with your hands. Right foot comes all the way back. Once you have your footing, arms up for warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Reverse, warrior. Hands to the floor, left foot, stepping back, plank. Staying here in plank, 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Tip forward just a little bit to bend the elbows. Staying here. Five. Chaturanga. Four, three, two, one. Up dog. Down dog. Inhale. Right heel up. Step the right foot forward between your hands. Left knee comes down. Crescent moon. Lunging hips forward. Once you're set up, arms up. Venus mudra. Start to release to take the hands back behind you. Interlace your fingers, broaden your shoulders, reach your knuckles further back, and deepen your back bend. Start to release your binds, right hand to the right knee. Bend your left knee, reach back with your left hand, binding hand to foot. So this is your mermaid. Once you have your mermaid, kick back, raise your right arm up. Then release, take the hands to the inside of the right foot. Turn the right toes out at an angle. Left hand comes to the floor. Right arm up to twist with a half bind. You may stay here with your left leg extended or again binding right hand to left foot and kick back. Then start to release your binds. Hands to the floor to the inside of the right foot. Walk your hands forward, forearms down. Yogi's choice and stay here in this uh, lizard pose in a passive position or tuck the left toes under, lift the left knee, walk your hands back in, turn the right toes forward, dig your right shoulder underneath. Let's take the arm balance of Kundiasana 2. Hands to the floor, lift your heel, right heel away from the floor as you then 
create space to kick the right leg out to the side. Then chaturanga your arms. You can stay here and just balance with your left foot down or tip forward and the left foot can come off the floor. I just keep the foot on the floor and just stay there. Yeah, extend the right leg out, but keep the left foot. Uh, sh shoulders underneath your knee so that the right arm, so the right arm, right, right uh, tricep is supporting the right leg so that when you shoot it out, it supports the leg. There you go. Pick up that foot and shoot it out. There you go. And chaturanga your left arm as well and lower your chest. Bend your left arm and lower your chest. <laughs> right, that's the hard part, right? right? When you bend your arm and you have to bear that weight, I guess that's the hard part, right? So, all right, so all that strengthening, you see? All right, release your rifle back to your floor. All right, so everyone, if you have the right toes turned out, turn the right toes forward, and you're going to frame your right foot with your hands, tuck the left toes under, and shift back to a half split. Then step the right foot back down, turn the left heel in, 45 degrees. And again, same as the previous, you're going to start to dig the right shoulder underneath your right knee. So you can frame your right foot with your hands either side. If you have a little bit more depth, you can take your left hand to the right ankle and draw the left elbow to the floor and then just bow forward. You can always press your head, uh, back of the head uh, against your left forearm for resistance. Eventually, you're thinking... Can you dig your shoulder underneath your knee so that the head goes behind the foot? All right, so as you're uh, creating flexibility, you're going to dig, 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 and see if you can uh, eventually get the head behind the foot. All righty, release the action a little bit. If your left forearm is not down, you're going to take your left forearm to the floor, to the edge of the mat on the left side, and the left forearm comes in 45 degrees. We're going to take um, Komodo Dragon. Then, as you shift to your left arm, you're going to take the right hand to bind to the left foot, so opposite hand and foot. Yeah. Then shift the weight onto your left arm and your left knee, and then free up your right leg, and shoot it off to the side. And that is your Komodo dragon. <laughs> Get there. That's okay. Right, if you're not quite there, full ah, almost there. There you go. So it's about balance and then finding the strength and the right positioning to get that balance. There you go, almost there. Aha, aha, aha. Komodo dragon. All right, let's begin to break, release your binds. You're gonna take the hands back to the inside of the right foot. Rotate your left heel back and lengthen over your right leg and folding forward. So if you want to frame your right foot, you can. If you want to keep both arms, both hands to the inside of the right foot, that works as well. So your choice. All right. Bend the front knee, ground the back heel down, circle it up into reverse warrior. Stretching out your right side, neutralizing your spine and your lower back, and then hands to the floor. Chaturanga, up dog, down dog. All right, second side, left leg up. Step the left foot forward between your hands, right knee comes down. Crescent moon. Walk your hands to the top of the thighs, lunge your hips forward, set up your base. Once you set, arms up, Venus Mudra. Wrap the hands back behind you, but take the non-dominant interlacing of your hands, broaden your shoulders, reach your knuckles back, deepen your back bend.
Then start to release, taking your left hand to the left thigh for support. Bend your right knee, reach back with your right hand to grab the outside of the foot. Once you have your foot, kick the foot away from you. When you kick your foot away from you, that creates tension into your right arm for the bowing effect. And then reaching left arm up and back, and this is your mermaid one. Then start to release, hands to the inside of the left foot, turn your left toes out and the left thigh out about 45 degrees. The right hand stays to the floor, left arm up and behind you into a half bind. You're welcome to stay here or start binding left hand to the right foot. So bend your right knee and grabbing the inside of the foot. And again, kicking back, deepening your rotation, stretching into your left arm. Release the binds, take the hands to the inside of the left foot. Walk your hands forward about a foot and lowering your forearms down into your lizard. All right, so for those of you who felt great in your lizard, wanted to stay here, keep it here. Keep it simple and very passive. If you're going for the arm balance, tuck the right toes under, lift the right knee, lift the elbows, walk your hands in. If your toes, uh, your toes are turned out, so you want to turn the toes back forward, your left toes. Then start to dig your left shoulder underneath the left knee, hands to either side of the left foot. That's right. Then you want to lengthen out your arms so that you can lift your left heel. Once you lift your left heel, now you can more easily kick the left leg out to the side, right? Then once you have that, then bend the elbows like a chaturanga, and that will give you the shape of your kundiasana too. Then if you're working to balance, you're going to shift forward and pick up the right foot, reach it back behind you. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so even if you have it there, right, that's a lot of strengthening happening. So that's the beginning of your arm balance. All righty. If you have the arm balance uh, release, right knee is down. So you're going to lift back up, turn the left toes back forward, and then draw the right heel back 90 degrees. So you're in... Um, kind of like a kneeling position, half kneeling position. You're going to dig your left shoulder underneath the left knee. So I'll face forward this time. Dig your left shoulder underneath the left knee. Either hand stay to either side for, um, for support or the right forearm comes down, right elbow comes down, grabbing the left ankle with your right hand and start to dig your left shoulder deeper and deeper underneath your left leg. And then eventually maybe the head behind the foot. All right, so we're doing this because we're beginning to create that shape of your Komodo dragon, right? So this is like halfway there already. All right, so either stay here or if you're taking Komodo dragon, you're going to release your bind of the right hand to the left ankle. And then if your hand is on the floor, you're going to take the right elbow down. Um, closer to the edge of the mat on the right side. The right hand comes to the floor. Your forearm is about 45 degrees. 45 degrees because that will give you a nice angle to balance on. Then as you shift the weight into your right arm and the right knee, you're going to bind the left hand to the right foot. Continue to shift the weight into your right arm and the right knee to the point that maybe your left foot can come off the floor and shoot it out to the left side. So your left arm is actually supporting the left leg a little bit. Komodo dragon. <laughs> that happens too. <laughs> right, when you shift too far to the right. All right. Let's begin to break, coming out of the Komodo Dragon. You're going to uh, come back up. 
Uh, hand to the inside of the left foot, rotate your right heel back, and you're gonna take a pyramid with your hands to the inside of the left foot. If you prefer to frame your left foot with your hands, you can take your uh, hands a little bit wider. Your choice. Bend the front knee, ground the back heel, circle it up into reverse warrior. Stretch out your left side, neutralize your lower back. And then hands to the floor, Chaturanga, up dog, down dog. Start to walk your feet forward toward your hands. Feet together, knees together, rise up chair. Hands together in prayer, twisting to the right. Hook the left arm to outer right knee. Make sure your knees and your feet are lined up. Stay here in the twisted chair or go into side crow. Then shift to your tiptoes. Hands to the right side. Shoulders width or a little bit wider if you need it. Then shift forward and slightly to the right. And then maybe both feet come off the floor. That's right. Shift forward and to your right. Look slightly forward. Yeah. I think your arms are a little bit wide. Draw it back in a little bit. Yeah, there you go. And then take the gaze to look forward. Yes, that's right. Almost there. <laughs> so you see how you have to go to the right and slightly forward to shift the weight so that the feet can come off the floor. Okay? Yeah. So to the right and slightly forward in order for the feet to come off the floor. Lift the head, look forward. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so you're at least taking the shape and then in time as you get stronger, you'll get there, right? All right, let's start to break. Inhale, come back to chair. Lengthen out the legs, lift up and take a slight back bend. And that will help you neutralize your legs and your lower back a little bit. Then come back to vertical. Stepping on the left foot, pick up the right knee, tree pose. And then once you steady your balance, arms up and out. All right, feel free. Any variations you like, any um, uh, transitions you like, all right, time to explore. Those of you who want to follow me, you can take Hands back behind you, interlacing your fingers to broaden your shoulders for a heart opener. If you want a side bend to the right, right arm, right leg, left arm overhead. If you want to take a half lotus, top of the right foot to your left hip crease and draw the right knee down, you can hold on to the right foot with your left hand. So you can stay here in a standing position with a half lotus. If you want to take a half lotus into a forward fold, Start to make your way forward and let the hands come down, forward folding. And again, if you're going even further, tiptoe balance. Shift to your left tiptoes, bending your left knee. And then as you shift the weight back slightly, maybe you can free up your hands to take together in prayer. Well done, good. Good. All righty, let's start to make your way back up. Wherever you are. Then once you get back up to your tree, step in your right foot down chair. Let's stay in your chair to give your knees a little bit of a release and neutralization. Exhale, dive forward, forward, fold. Bend the knees, rise up, chair. Hands together in prayer, twisting to your left. Hook the right arm to outer left knee, and then make sure your knees and your feet are lined up, and then twist deeper to your left. You may stay here in the twisted chair, or shift to your tiptoes. 
start to take the hands to the floor. Now, you don't want to go too wide. When you go too wide with your hands, you lose the strength of your arms. You want to go maybe shoulders width or a little bit wider than shoulders width. Elbows are slightly bent. You want to look forward to the floor slightly ahead of you. Without drawing your head down, you want to lift the head slightly. Then you want to shift left and forward. Now, I like to take the left foot off the floor, so the foot closer to the floor first. Then, as I start to gain the balance, I pick up the other foot. So I take the foot that's closer to the floor away first, and then take the other foot off the floor. Uh, that's okay, maybe it's okay. Keep the gaze looking forward, lift the head, there you go. Take the left foot off the floor first, that's right, and keep shifting, and then maybe a right, ha. <laughs> I keep working on that. Aha. <laughs> well, I'm gonna try. All right, all right, let's start to break. Step the feet back, inhale. Rise up to chair and then lengthen out the legs and take it slightly back into a back bend. Come back to neutral. Stepping on the right foot, pick up the left knee, tree pose. And once you get to your tree, whatever variations you like, feel free. Just do repeat what you did on the first side. So go ahead and play for those of us who are following me. Wrapping your hands back behind you, but take the other thumb on top and this is your heart opener with the hands bound behind you. You can take the side bend, left arm to left leg, right arm overhead. So notice your hips have to shift to your right in order for you to side, bow, side bend to your left. If you're taking a half lotus forward fold, tiptoe balance, work on that. So it's the top of the left foot to your right hip crease. You can hold on to the left foot with your right hand. Then folding forward into a half lotus forward fold. Walk your hand slightly forward, tip the way forward to shift to your tiptoes first. And then once you get to your tiptoes and your knees are bent, you can shift back and line up your torso over your right foot. See? How far forward, how far back you have to lean in order to find your balance, right? And then, of course, if you can find the balance, hands together in prayer in front of the heart. Not bad, Vivian. Yeah. All right. When you're ready, start to make your way back up to tree. All right. Once you get back to tree, stepping your left foot down chair. Stay in your chair for a few breaths to help your knee joints, ankle joints reset, especially for those of us who took half lotus. And then dive forward, forward fold. All right, we're gonna take a few, a bunch of breaths here for crow pose. If you like crow pose into a headstand, if you have other variations you like, go ahead and take. So crow pose, hands come forward about a foot and a half from your toes. Your hands are about shoulders width, palms are flat. So again, you're going to shift your tiptoes, lifting your heels as you bend your knees, then also bend your arms so that your knees um, make contact to the back of the arms. Once you have a sturdy position to lean up against, gaze to the floor uh, slightly ahead of you. Same thing there, shifting forward, keeping the elbows bent. When your elbows line up your, over your wrists, maybe your toes get light enough to lift off the floor. Vivian, I might even walk your feet slightly further back, about two inches. Try again from there.
You see how when you are further back with your feet, you have to lean forward a little bit more to line up your elbows over your wrists. That actually, actually gets your toes lighter because you have to lean further forward, right? So what happens is if your hands and your feet are too close together, by the time you get to vertical between your elbows and your wrists, the weight might still be too far back uh, against your back bodies, right? Your, your towards your feet and your legs. So if you take the distance a little bit wider, you have to lean further forward in order for your elbows to line up with your wrists. And that might be just enough for your toes to get lighter, for the weight to transfer forward, right? A little bit more so that your toes can come off the floor. So if you have longer limbs, it might be more than a foot and a half. It might be two feet, right? If you're taller, it might even be three feet. It all depends on your, your uh, length of limbs. All right, let's start to break. Make your way back. Down, dog. Raise your left leg up. Pigeon. Left knee comes in. Land that shin to the floor. And once you have that, left side angles out 30 to 45 degrees. Into right knee further back to lower your hips. Untuck the toes behind you. Walk your hands back. Elongate through the spine. All right, we're going to walk the hands over to your left and then turn the torso over to your left a little bit. Keep your left hand supporting on the floor. With your right hand, crawl the right fingertips further forward as you start to lean the torso forward as well. So you're getting into a rotation as well as a deeper stretch into your right arm, right shoulder. All right, walk it back in, walk it back to center, and then take it to the other side. Right hand to the floor, angle your torso over to the right. Then with your left hand, crawl the left fingertips further forward. And then reach, reach, reach. All right, you can go a little bit deeper if you want, or stay up a little higher, up to you how you want to take the stretch. But by angling your torso to the right and then reach with your left fingertips, you're getting lengthy through your left arm, left shoulder, left ribs. All right, walk it back to center. Let's realign and lengthen once again before we come forward. Nice and level with your hips, elongating through the spine. And then when you're ready, walk it forward. And either stay in your forearms or make pillows with the hands. If you like additional variations, go ahead and take whatever you want or just stay here in a passive pigeon. So if you're taking binding again, you can walk your hands back in. Left hand stays to the floor, reach back with your right hand to grab the right foot and then kick back. So again, you always want that bow effect, right? The tension by kicking back to lengthen into your right arm and that helps you to draw your torso more vertically, maybe even into a back bend and then reaching the left arm up. All right, let's start to break. You're gonna take the left seat down. Swing the right leg all the way around and you're probably off to the left side a little bit, so center your seat. Then you're gonna to start to work on leg cradle, arms, your hands underneath your right foot. Make sure you flex your right foot. And then you wanna pick up the right heel a little higher and sitting up tall. And then if you're able to, you're going to thread the arms underneath the right shin and then draw the right shin across your heart center. Up. 
Ashtavakrasana, arm balancing here. You're gonna release your leg cradle and draw the right knee again over your shoulder as high as you can. And hands come to the floor. Why did the mat twist? So you're gonna hook the left foot over your right and flex your feet. So now your feet are locked in. Good. Then you're gonna ground your palms to the floor, shift the weight forward. As you reach your legs out to the side, you're gonna pick up the seat and extend. Ashtavakrasana. Right, so I'll face you to see if maybe that makes better sense. You're gonna shift forward, press into your hands, lift the seat and extend the legs out. Well, yeah, ah, there you go. All right, that's okay. that's okay. It takes time for you to kind of figure out how to shift the weight. Yes, there you go. All right, so you need to lean the torso further forward. When you lean the torso further forward, when you press into your hands, maybe your seat can come off the floor. All right, make sure your foot is wider to the right side. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, bring it in a little bit. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So now when you lean forward, your foot can more easily come off the floor, you see? <laughs> right? So again, so you see how this chaturanga arm, right? So we did it here, right? The chaturanga arm is holding up the leg, right? This chaturanga arm is holding up the leg. And then same thing here, this chaturanga arm is holding up the leg. So this um, assist of the same arm, same leg, holding up the weight of the body, creating a structure for you to put the weight on to lift. All right, so right arm, yes, mainly, but then also once you bend your left elbow, the left elbow can press into your ribs and that also can give you additional help, right? So it depends how your anatomy helps you to fit to create the structure to hold weight. All right, let's break. All right, left heel comes back, swing the right leg back, so through your pigeon. You're gonna walk it back to your down dog. All right, second side, right leg up. Draw the right knee in. Land the shin to the floor. Inch your left knee further back. Walk your hands in, elongate through your spine. All right, once you have the base set, you're gonna walk your hands over to the right and the torso angles and rotates to the right. Right hand stays to the floor for support. Left hand, reaching forward as you reach forward, Maybe you can take the torso slightly down or you can take it deeply forward, your choice. All you're looking for as you reach your left hand to your right side is to get to the stretch of the outer left arm, left shoulder, left ribs. You can support however you want, go as far down as you want, but just feel for that extension on the left side. As you get the stretch into your left side, you're also going into the stretch and the, glute, uh, the glutes on the right side. All right, let's walk it back to center and then switch directions. You know, walk over to your left. Left hand stays to the floor. Right hand reaches out, forward and to your left. So opposite direction. Stretching into your right arm, right shoulder, right ribs. All righty, start to walk it back in. The square back and realign, so walking your hands in, elongate through your spine, make sure you're nice and level in your hips. And then once you're set, now you're ready to walk forward, staying on your forearms, so making pillows with the hands, resting your forehead.
All right, start to walk your hands back in. Let's take your mermaid bind. Right hand stays to the floor, to the uh, front of the right shin, inside of the knee. Then bend your left knee, reach back with your left hand to grab the outside of the foot. Once you have the foot, you want to kick your foot back. Use that tension of the bow to help you lift your torso to a more vertical position, maybe even into a slight back bend. And that might help you to uh, reshift the balance to then take the right arm up and back. All righty, starting to release. You're going to take the right seat down, swing the left leg forward. So again, you're going to be shifting to the right, so take it back to center. Recenter your seat. Then leg cradle, starting with the preparation. So your hands go underneath your left ankle, make sure you flex your left foot, sit up tall, and elevate your left heel. So start to um, get adjusted to the hip opening first. Then when you're ready, you're gonna thread the uh, arms underneath your left shin and then draw the uh, arms in and the shin across the, uh, the heart center, maybe about parallel to the floor. All right, when you're ready to take the arm balance, draw the left knee a little higher over your shoulder, hands to the floor, a little bit wider than mat swift. Make sure that the left arm is, left uh, tricep is about 45 degrees. It's the tricep that's holding up your left leg. Then hook the right foot over your left, creating a lock. Then as you bend your elbows, lean the torso forward. As you lean the torso forward and you press into your hands, maybe you gather enough strength to lift the seat. And as you lift your seat, maybe your legs move out to the side. That's right. That's right. Bend your elbows and lean the torso forward a little bit more. That's right. That's right. And then press into your hands and see if you can lift. There you go. All right. So as you continue to build that strength, build um, the balance, maybe you can lift and hold. Good enough. Stay there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so that's the building of the strength, right? So right now, you're not ready to take the weight off, right? But as you keep working on these shapes and keep building on those chaturanga arms, right, then maybe you get strong enough to lift. <laughs> All right, let's break. And we're going to come back uh, to your pigeon. So right heel comes in. Swing the left leg back and gently start to walk it back to your down dog and pedal out. All righty, walk your feet forward toward your hands and gently take the feet down. Yogic toe lock to the big toes. Shift back toward the sacrum and extend the legs out in a wide position. Then once you steady your balance, you're gonna release your binds and then take the arms forward, palms together. If you're able to lift the heels higher, reach your hands further forward. So you're coming closer and closer into a tighter V shape and a tighter forward fold. All right, so notice how when you lift the leg higher and closer toward the, cent uh, uh, toward the torso, it is so much harder, right? So much more demanding. All right, release the legs to your floor in a wide position. Take the hands to the floor, inhale, lengthen, exhale, gently start to crawl the hands forward, but be uh, mindful that you're not rounding the spine, you're keeping a neutral spine as you walk forward. Once you get to your maximum, you're gonna stay there. Take a few more breaths, so I'll give you a side view so you can see that my spine is straight. 
Now you're gonna take a few breaths, get adjusted to that flexibility. And once you have more, you're gonna walk forward a little bit more, re-lengthen, try not to round, and then see if you can go a little bit deeper. Now for those of us who have more flexibility, you can pancake toward the floor, go ahead and take it. Otherwise, work, uh, walk to your um, uh, deepest forward fold with a lengthier spine. Right, once you get to a certain point, your spine might round a little bit, but make sure that you're pretty deep and forward folding before you start rounding, right? So if you're high up here and you're rounding, you're really not doing uh, much of anything, right? So you want to maintain the lengthy spine. Crawl the hands forward and get as flat toward the floor as possible. And then, if this is truly your maximum, if you then want to just relax your head, that might start to bring a little bit of roundedness to the upper back. That's okay, just to the uh, upper back, but keep lengthiness to your lower back as much as you can because that forward fold is really um, from there, your lower back. <laughs> Did you guys give up already? <laughs> All right, let's start to break. I know it's hard, right? Um, yeah, so if you're not very flexible, of course, right? These are very difficult poses, but don't give up. Keep working on it, do the best you can. All right, let's start to break. Hands to the inside of the thighs above your knees, and then take the soles of feet together. And then with the hands supporting, just butterfly your knees a little bit, right? Creating, uh, releasing some tension. All right, when you're ready, Lift the knees, step the feet to the floor, pivot to your heels again, and let's windshield wiper again. All right, come back to center. Extend the legs forward. Gently start to lower onto your back. Once you're on your back, walk your feet in, and let's take a bridge. Your feet are about hips with distance. Feel for the back of the heels with your fingers. Once you measure that out, press your heels down, lift your seat, and that is your bridge. You can keep your arms alongside the hips. You can interlace your hands underneath you, your choice. All right, when you're ready, start to release your hands, lower your seat down. Then extend the right leg out uh, in front of you, draw the left knee in toward the chest and hug the left knee in, preparing for a twist. Left arm out to a T and then twist to the right. So you're rolling onto outer right hip, outer right leg. Try to keep the left shoulder blade, left arm flat to the floor as you rotate. Take it back to center, switch legs, switch arms, and twist to the other direction. Squaring back to center again, hugging both knees in. And once you're feeling pretty symmetrical and you're ready, step the feet to the floor, slide the legs forward, Shavasana, side of relaxation. Feet are separated, toes turned out, arms alongside the body with palms facing up, eyes closed. Let everything go.
beginning to draw your breath back in, moving your fingers and your toes. Reach the arms overhead, stretching in opposite directions, and then rolling over to the right side and come up to a comfortable cross-legged position. And let's take a non-domination on top, reconnecting to an even seat, lengthy spine, shoulders broad, breath deep, and let the neck be free. Inhale for own. Um. Hands together in prayer, bowing forward, sealing in practice. You know, come up. Namaste. Thank you so much for being here this morning. And thank you for sharing your practice with me. My name is Stephen Chang, coming to you live from 333 Grand in downtown Jersey City, New Jersey. Please visit my website, simhayoga.com, for the hybrid schedule, which is in person here at 333 Grand, as well as through Zoom. You can register for class through ubindi.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, classes are $10, and you can pay through Venmo or PayPal. Payment information on the bottom of the video, as well as my website, simhayoga.com. Thank you again for joining me. See you next time.